Hello. Welcome to jasonnewland.com. This is Jason Chats with Andre and he don't know what's happening because for some reason his bag has flown into the air. What's that? What's going on there, Daddy? Why? What's my bag in the air for? <laughs> Hello. You don't really care, do you? I don't feel that bothered. Are you bothered? Do I look bothered? He just wants to go to sleep. He doesn't want to be bothered by me, look. Do you see the little fatty little nose, look? Hello. <laughs> Hello. Okay, I'll leave him. If he wants to get out, I'll let him come and say hello. If he doesn't, then. Look at my hair. I need to have a haircut. So... I thought I would do. Oh, I thought I would do a Jason Chats video. Uh, I did one a few days ago, so I thought I'd do another one. I maybe do one or two a week. I don't know. We'll see. This is only going to be a short one because I have my dinner in the cooker or in the oven, uh, so that's going to be ready in about ten minutes. So luckily for you, this isn't going to be one of those long, long videos. This is quite nice because as I'm talking to you, I'm stroking my boy because he's just kind of happily in his bag. And it's kind of two things happening here. He's got his comfort blanket, which is the bag my comfort blanket is him so I feel more comfortable and relaxed when I've got him around me uh, when I've got him I can talk to complete strangers in the street and have conversations and um, be nice well not that I'm horrible normally but you know just have that um, confidence when I've got this little boy with me But, and he's, I suppose, feels comfortable when he's in his bag as well. He's trying to go to sleep. I'm annoying him. I'll leave him alone. So it's quite a nice, is the word symbiotic? I don't know. Well, <sighs> I'll probably wake him up in a minute. It's just one last time and then. In all fairness, I've just made a deep sleep whisper hypnosis recording and he was running around making noise the whole way through it. So basically I should just rattle him, just rattle a bag. Of course I wouldn't do that, but you know, you know what I mean, kind of disturb him, that's what I mean. I could get my ukulele out. You've not seen my ukulele yet, have you? Well, I'll perhaps get it out next time. I'll show you my, again, it's not a euphemism. I actually do have a ukulele. It's in the bedroom, it's on the wardrobe. Not wardrobe, the, I've got one of these set of uh, a bookcase. Oh, oh you did. Uh, just in case you didn't know what that was. So that's a bookcase, I've got one in the other room and the ukulele's in its box, it kind of came with a box, like a little miniature guitar really. The box, you know, I've owned a few guitars over the years. 
I had a really nice guitar back in 1996 maybe 7, 97, kind of 96 slash 97 at the end of 96 and I spent probably about £250 on this guitar which was, I mean it wasn't like the best guitar in the world, I'm not saying that Eric Clapton would have looked at it and got a stiffy, you know, I'm just saying that it was a nice guitar, it sounded nice and that helped me to want to play it because it sounded good. Even my limited um, playing. I mean, really, because I was doing security at the time, which I could with the ukulele, I could have took that into work and play the ukulele while I was at work and practiced while I was getting paid. With a guitar, quite cumbersome, quite big, uh, to carry around so it wouldn't probably have looked as professional but saying that saying that I think I did actually take my guitar into work and I think I might have got told off for it apparently yeah apparently I was disturbing the shoppers so it's um It is I'm trying to think what's been happening. So I went to the psychiatrist to do to have, just to. I thought it was going to be the standard visit that I normally have, which is usually a very quick, uh, not particularly interested in me, and just you know review the medication and then see you next year, JJ. But he actually was interested because I told him about, um, there was a situation that happened two weeks ago that I've not mentioned on here, but uh, basically it's two weeks ago tomorrow. So yeah, it's just, it's 13 days ago. There was shit, what I, what I, heard was screaming the other side of some neighbors the other over the other bit I guess it's that it's, it's like round a corner but it's easy to get to and I ignored it and ignored it and then it got to the point where I couldn't ignore it anymore so I go over there knock on the door to see if everything's okay I'm so genuinely concerned and I wasn't thanked, put it this way. And uh, I clearly uh, was not wanted, or you know, they didn't want me knocking on the door. I didn't, I didn't make a fuss. I just said, "Is everything okay?" That's that's it. You know, I'm not not drama. I don't do drama. And <clears throat> anyway, the next day on the Sunday, the person whose home it is threatened me. Uh, he said to me, if you ever knock on my door again, I will fuck you up. It was his words. So I just like, oh, okay. I didn't know what to do. I, did, I just, just was a bit surprised. It was, it was a little bit like, you know, when you get a Kit Kat and you bite into it and it's all chocolate. It's full of chocolate, just no no wafer or anything. It's like, oh, what a surprise! Not not necessarily like the highlight of your life, and it's not pleasant. It's just, it's kind of like a bit jarring, a bit like oh. I'm just going to hold him there so you can see him. So you want to get down? He doesn't. You don't like this, do you? Oh dear. Well, 
Ooh. Love you, Daddy. You get Daddy kisses. Daddy kisses. Get Daddy kisses. Daddy kisses. Get Daddy kisses. Go on. <laughs> he basically. Um... <laughs> He's me. He's pussy. <laughs> You want to go wave goodbye wave goodbye to everyone say hello to auntie rachel and auntie sebastian and uncle boston and uh colonel sanders and mr hillary clinton oh hillary yes mr mr theresa may Oh, you're going to get your hair cut off now for saying that that's treason. Ooh. Okay, got to let him go. He's had enough now. So, yeah, that's it. Uh, anyway, I... I had Andre with me, so and he literally just got off his lead and he was running in the road and I caught him and so I was a little bit distracted by that and then to have that little uh, threat. And I didn't know what to do about it. So I asked a few people, asked a couple of friends and they blatantly did not care. They were not interested at all. So fair enough. One person said, well, don't knock on his door then. Which is fair enough, but, you know, don't need to be told twice for that one. Uh, then I contact, I spoke to another friend and he said I should have gone to the police. And uh, the psychiatrist said, if it happens again, I should go to the police. So it's kind of, you know, I told a psychiatrist about it and it's very, very difficult. You know, I've, there was a man living across the road, like one of the neighbors, not in the actual building and, and he was always shouting. It's a different person to the, one that was uh, threatening me, but this is a different person, and he was always shouting, especially at the dog, but like really aggressive. And I'd hear him shouting, and I remember one Saturday afternoon, I was in my bed, I was just lying down on the bed, and I was like, oh, I wanna do something, but I can't. You know, I've got to keep out of that kind of stuff, domestics. Even the police don't like to get involved in domestic is, you know, disputes and stuff if they don't have to. Eventually he did, he actually, he was doing what I thought he was doing, but I couldn't prove it. And he did get arrested and went to prison. Uh, so he, you know, he just, Horrible. I don't like all that stuff. Just it gives me, what it does is it's the shouting that has a trigger for me because there's a lot of shouting when I was a kid, when I was like really, really little. A lot of shouting, and the shouting always led to worse things, never stopped at shouting. So then, my older childhood, when I hear shouting, I expected bad things to happen, although they generally didn't. But I was still on edge, still kind of high anxiety, you know? And even now, at my age, if I hear shouting, people shouting, it, it, yeah, I react. 
like instantly react to it. It's weird, it's strange. Again, this is another one of my, I don't want my Jason chats to be depressing. So it's not, it's just, I'm just talking about what's happening in my life at the moment. So it's, everything's all right, I'm feeling all right today. Uh, I did a good deed on Wednesday, which I won't go into, but I felt quite good about it at the time. Um, yeah, it's, Today I did go out. I didn't need to go out, I didn't need to do anything, but I went out, I need to get some food, and which I did, but then I came home and I've not really accomplished much, to be fair. Um, but I'm getting more and more feedback from the Let Me Bore You To Sleep recordings. They seem to be coming more and more listened to and people seem to really like them which I'm pleased about so I should continue with that and that's the end of this recording because I can smell my food oh yeah I can smell it so I'm going to go and have something to eat you take care of yourselves everybody Lots of love. Andre has... Oh, Andre's back in his bag now. I'll put the bag down there. I won't harass him anymore. So take care. See you all another time. Bye.